much of the people before the the Pentateuch was exactly. was written believe that because even Job says, "I know that my Redeemer lives." Amen. Well, who is his Redeemer? It's Yeshua. <laughs> but that's not for another almost two thousand years, right? Right. That's about right. Yeah. Two thousand twenty-five hundred. So, so God says, you are righteous. Then he tells us how. Because it's important for us to understand how. It's not because you do things right. Uh, this is probably one of my soapboxes. But God is not concerned with your morality. Read the Old Testament. He's concerned with your ethics. How you treat your neighbor. He says, he who loves his brother is my disciple. Uh He who does the least, does this for the least of these my brethren is my disciple. He doesn't say, he who, who tithes, right? Though he still says, you should do these, you should tithe. But, what's the more important thing? He says, the weightier things of God, justice, relieving the oppressed, delivering people from Satan's rule. That's, that's what he calls righteous. The tzadakim, the, the righteous ones, are the ones who do what God wants. They fast according to his ways, which is not, you know, taking from yourself and punishing yourself. It's taking from yourself to bless somebody else. Go feed the poor. Go take care of the widow. Go take care of the orphans. That's what he says is his fast in Isaiah 58. Is is that who we are? It's who we're supposed to be. Okay, so in Philippians 3.9, it says, And be found in him. Not having a righteousness of your own that comes from the law. So even even do it, taking care of, of widows and orphans doesn't necessarily make you righteous. It shows your righteousness. But that which comes through faith in Messiah. For the righteousness from God depends on faith. And I, and I like to translate it trust. Amen. And I agree. Such a better word. Such a. It word. is. There's there's times where it's tr- where faith should be translated trust, and usually it's faithfulness. Because if it's those who are faithful that endure to the end, right? In order to be faithful to our God, you have to trust Him. <laughs> so they go hand in hand, but. You must be faithful. You must stand firm. And part of that is knowing who you are so that you can always walk how he has called you to walk. Always walk in accordance with the Spirit. So it says that we are to put on the Lord Yeshua, our Messiah, and not follow after the flesh to gratify it. For as many of you as were baptized into Messiah have put on Messiah. So... We're already told, you put on Messiah by baptism, right? By washing, by allow. Uh, the The Word of God says that that the Word is is the waters that wash, right? Yeshua is the Word, so He and the Word of God wash you. They cleanse you, and as soon as you have that baptism, as soon as you have that washing, He says you're clothed with Him. So it may feel as though I'm beating a dead horse by going over this, you know, repetitive, repetitive. But faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And since we are righteous by faith through Messiah, it is necessary to build up that faith with the truth of God's word. And there's there's actually a lot more scriptures. There's a lot more scriptures. There's... Like close to a hundred of them that just talk about how he has made you righteous 
that you are righteous and that that he has promises for the righteous that that it's 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 yours this righteousness is yours i mean we're even told to put on the breastplate of okay now i'd i'd like to cover cover that really quick just the you know helmet of salvation word of faith it's not a physical action you don't you don't put on salvation by doing this you don't put on righteousness by doing this you do it by knowing who you are in god because the word of god is your salvation and it protects your mind because you know the word of god and is steadfast in you the truth keeps you girded up so that you can walk faithfully in it faith is trusting God and when you trust God all the arrows and all the attacks of the enemy are nothing to you Mm -hmm. they get stopped the word of God that the weapons of your warfare is a sword in your hand as you speak it takes down the powers of darkness Mm -hmm. salvation is what takes you places if you are a carrier of salvation which you are your feet are shod. Why? Because God needs you to go. He says, go to your hometown, go to your neighbor, go to all of your country, and then go to the ends of the earth. Right? Take my salvation everywhere. So everything that God tells us where to put on, we put on by being who he said we are by trusting his word, by putting faith in him. So, your first key to effective prayer is this. Pray the scriptures about God clothing you with righteousness, wearing the breastplate of of righteousness, having cleansed you and made you holy, that you are a saint of the Most High, that he has seated you in heavenly places with Messiah, that because you are righteous, he has planted you beside rivers of living water, that you may be rooted and established in him and in his ways. And, I mean, I guess I could give a, a little demonstration. I I get excited when I pray, so don't don't mind if I get a little loud. I've never, I've never, never noticed that. <laughs> but a couple of you, yeah. maybe not. I've always wondered why you're such an introvert. Yeah. <laughs> Which is funny, because I kind of am. Uh, but but I, I say this because as you speak the Word of God, mm-hmm. the Word of God makes a way. Amen. Right, His Word does not return to Him void. It does not return to Him without doing what it set out to do. So as you proclaim His Word over your life, all of you, your lives, you will see it doing its work because that's what it's meant to do so i'll i'll start praying and and just you know father i thank you that you have made me the righteousness of god that you have clothed me with your righteousness that you have put your robes of righteousness on me that you have caused me to wear the breastplate of righteousness having cleansed me and made me holy father i thank you that that you have done the same for these men that you have made them holy lord Lord, that it's not a thing in the future but it is a thing in the present for those things which which are by faith we speak and they cause it causes them to be and lord we know that your will is that for all of us we are to be righteous we are to be trees planted by living waters that grow strong that grow rooted that grow established in who you are lord we thank you for your righteousness we thank you for what you did so that we can experience it so that we can live in it because we we desire to see you to know you to know the father to see you clearly, Lord. Help us to see you more clearly. Help us to be always in your way, always walking after your truth, walking in righteousness, doing your will. Father, you have placed it in us. Help us to always bow our knee to the righteousness that you have given us. So, So you're to pray this as though it's done completed finished and why do you pray it as though it's done because it is Amen. Yeshua finished it Amen. he did 
everything that was necessary for you to be free and have freedom now. He doesn't say salvation is for tomorrow. He says today is the day of your salvation. Amen. Amen. Can so, I, Can I just throw in something? Because you said yeah. earlier that you thought trust was a better word than faith. Mm -hmm. And I think I, I see that when I read um, the CJB. Mm -hmm. And I know it's not a technical translation. What, what do they call that when it's not? It's a paraphrase. It's a version. Or a paraphrase or something. Between a paraphrase and a translation. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, and I've noticed that pattern, okay? But, but the other radar that I've got is when we talk about salvation, if you're talking to a bunch of Western, Greek, Roman, you know, mm -hmm. Catholic, Protestant, mm -hmm. doesn't matter, I mean, we're all in the same boat. Mm -hmm. My mind automatically goes, oh, I get to go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Every time we say that word, and see, when I look at, you compare how Yeshua spoke when he stood up in the synagogue for the first time in Luke 4, to me it said he saying, came to set the captives free. That's mm -hmm. what you're talking about yeah. with the Amen. kingdom expansion. Amen. He came to deliver us. Amen. And what do we say in the Lord's Prayer? We don't say, say, we don't say right. save us, we say right. deliver us. Right. right? So that that original, to me, that's a Hebrew concept of, of kingdom. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm not saying we should never use salvation. I'm not saying that. But I'm just saying that I think we need to be careful to the audience that we're talking to. And a lot of times people hear salvation, they go, transportation, baby. I got my ticket. I don't need to do, I don't have to obey. I don't have to do anything. I'm going to be up in the stands observing. I don't have to participate in this. I don't have to bring anything. Because if I do, I'm trying to, um, through works, that's what they're taught, somehow get my ticket which I already have and it's all transportation instead of transformation. Mm -hmm. So that's, I'm just throwing that as an aside because you say a lot, I hear it, trust as opposed to faith. Mm -hmm. I think we need to be careful to say more deliverance than, so I'm not saying don't ever use salvation, but I think deliverance has a bet, more of a concept of what you're trying to explain in the kingdom context. Mm -hmm. Right. Because mm -hmm. that's what we need, we're all oppressed okay. and we need that deliverance right now. Right. Though yeah. when I say deliverance, how many of you automatically think demon possession? Exorcism, yes. Yeah, right. right? Yeah. It's influence. It's not necessarily possession. I mean, it's all kinds of different well, levels. Well, I'm yeah. saying, yeah. what what do people think? Well, that yeah. that's yeah. why that that's too. why I use yeah. several terms. I, yeah. I use salvation, set people free. Um, As a good Catholic boy, I know exactly what you're saying. <laughs> you say deliverance, I'm thinking the exorcist, right? Right. I've been hanging around Earl, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's changed my views. <laughs> so my my first experience with a demoniac, mm. I was watching The Exorcist, <laughs> and there's a girl sitting beside me. Uh -huh. We're we're in the barracks. It's the uh -huh. lounge area, and it's on on the TV. So I'm just sitting there watching it, and there's some creepy part on. And right. this girl says, she's like blank <laughs> stare at the TV. That's me, and I'm just Whoa. like, <laughs> what? Whoa. Yeah. I found out it was true, but Whoa. I was not prepared, right? <laughs> like, yes. this was my introduction to the reality of people are still, you know, really you affected. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. 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 I, I didn't picked, know her yet. I didn't. I should have picked another branch of the military. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Uh, then the next week it was... Uh, crazy things happening in people's rooms because of witches that had previously sure. lived in their rooms sure. lights turning on and off that aren't plugged in i'm like part, <laughs> where part, am i <laughs> as part of what you're doing and why i'm so excited you're talking is about prayer as god has moved us as a congregation as he's moved us into grossmont center the reality is we're going to have expect to have more of that walking by and even coming in the door and the need for us to be prayerfully prepared but also know if that does happen inside surface mm. how do we handle it mm. who handled it what to do mm -hmm. that's part of the warfare aspect and i know you know you're not doing every aspect today but that's part of that aspect that we need to really have some something going because we can't yeah I, I love i love my ar 
but to have it unloaded is really a waste of time. <laughs> it's got to have bullets in there to be worthwhile. Yeah. 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 Totally. Well, knowing that you're righteous because of God mm -hmm. really helps in dealing with demons. Yeah. Because if you're righteous because of God, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what they say to you. That's good. It's like, That's, right. That's really it, good. It doesn't matter if you're accusing me because... Mm -hmm. It's it's not that's by sticky. me that you're coming out. <laughs> mm, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Talk to my dad. So yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say something very bluntly about the righteousness of God. If you choose to deny that you are righteous after you are washed by the blood of the sacrifice of our Messiah, you are denying him and what he has done. It is literally a forfeiting of your salvation, of your deliverance. It must not be done. God, God is serious about calling you out, making you separate from the world and not being part of them. He is serious about what he has done. It cost his life. If he didn't get it right, it would have cost everything in the earth. It never would be redeemed right. for the kingdom of God. Right. Because that was, that was the linchpin. If Yeshua had messed up, mm -hmm. if he had taken the kingdoms from Satan, there would be no redemption for mankind. There would, no, there would be no imputed righteousness. Mm -hmm. None of it would, would exist. So to deny what he did for you after you've already received the salvation of your soul unto God is to say, I, I'm not saved. Mm. That's heavy. Yeah. As the word says, do not harden your hearts today. Amen. Hear his voice, lest you perish in the wilderness with that unbelieving generation. Mm. Man. When are you going to get to the heavy stuff? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I want to give a testimony about this speaking righteousness and life. A few years ago, my wife was really getting under my skin. She was always complaining about stuff and just, it was, it was too much for me. I'm like, could you stop focusing on the negative? Like, please. So I'm telling her this this stuff right and she's not doing it she's not changing her focus she's not changing her words and i'm like lord what what can i do and he said do it for her you're her you're her husband you have authority Amen. so i started praying and the the prayer was basically what i prayed over you guys that she's righteous that she's holy that she's patient and is full of loving kindness that the things of this world do not weigh her down for his yoke is easy and his burden is light and within a couple of months she was a different person Amen. that's that's the power of god in us since she's one with me i have authority over her that's right. i'm not saying you should do that for people you don't have authority over but speaking good about people, blessing them instead of cursing them with your words mm -hmm. has an impact. They, they did a study on, on students one year. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is kind of crazy. They took all these students, right? And they took the, the students that had their profiles and they all were like straight A, top of the class students. They switched them with the students had, that had the lowest grades. The teachers the next year knew nothing about it, but they switched the profiles, the names on the profiles. Would you believe <laughs> that the expectation of the teacher mm -hmm. was based on the profiles they received, right? right? So the students that had the low grades in their profiles, guess how they performed? How their profiles the ones, the new ones they got, because that's the expectation of the teacher. And how did the ones that, that had the new profiles with the good grades do? 
they all achieved well. Why? Because our expectations affect people. Our thoughts towards people affect people. That's why God says, bless and do not curse. I, get, I set before you life and death. Choose life. Right? He says, speak life. Speak life. Speak life. It has an impact. It always has an impact. When my children do something wrong, I don't say, what's wrong with you? Mm-hmm. Because that gives an implication there's something wrong with them. And they will live the rest of their life being like, well, there's something wrong with me when they do something. Because my father just spoke to me. My, my human father just my spoke authority. to me. Yeah, my authority figure. Mm-hmm. It just, just asked me a question. What's yeah. wrong with me? There must yeah. be. Must there be must be something. That. Yeah, inferentially. That's right. And, and to give a confirmation, I don't go to the teacher's lounge. And I do not look at the files unless there's a specific need. Special ed kid, he's got a 504, I have to go check it out. Other than that, I don't look at the files because my kids come in, oh, he was an F student last year, and he's a teacher's lounge. Oh, yeah, you got Jamie? Oh, man, he's a screw-up, he's a this, he's a that. And I tell my kids day one of class, I say, guys, let me explain something. I'm not looking at your files, and I could care less what you did last year. Today, and my expectation is excellence. All you can do is what you're created to do, which is excellent. So from now on, you're going to tell me what you are, who you are, and how I'm supposed to treat you based on your actions and your words. What happened in the past, that's the past. And I've got kids who were F students who turn it around. And I've got F students that stay F students. Yeah. But it's a turnaround thing. And it's not having that preconceived idea of what that kid's supposed to do. But the other thing is this. What this man just said, in terms of praying for his wife, mm. and this isn't a, hey, raise your hand and tell me if you do this. How often, how often do you, as a husband, pray for your wife in that manner? Because all of us hear what he's saying. There are times, I mean, even Darcy probably occasionally says things that's like, oh, I can't look. But how often do we pray? And, I, and I'm thinking right now, I, I want to challenge each one of you right now to a 30-day challenge of prayer. That the next 30 days, every day, and, and preferably over her, that she hears you. But if not, if that's not cool right now, then just start it and pray. And, and even what you wrote, could you write that down and send it to us? Yeah. Okay. And just pray what he said over your wife. And I know, I know, God's word is true. It will change the environment and the atmosphere in your home, and it'll change that person. But we, particularly as husbands and as fathers, even as grandpas, we've got power and authority. And we should be exercising it. We should be walking it. Amen. Good stuff, Rick. So can I just interject something real quick? Because you're you made you made this point. Yep. Because what you're doing, what you're demonstrating as far as the prayer, is really this. It's it's a decree. Mm-hmm. And what this guy teaches is the same thing you said about, you know, when you when you decree with the word of God, it never goes out and then comes back empty. Or right. It yeah. doesn't. It has to accomplish the purpose for which it was just said. But you're, you're teach, what you're teaching in a way, and what you just said, John, mm-hmm. is this book. Yeah. It's decree. I'll tell you what, guys. You I was will excited never when you told me I'll that. tell you what, six yeah. minutes a day for each, you know, for each day of the month. And... It's exactly what you're saying is this mm-hmm. to a T. Yeah. And he gets it's, no kickback. So, <laughs> no, I'm not. So the, I didn't write this. When I was, when I was I typing up my thing here, I was like getting to the end of this portion. And I was like, man, I need, I need something to be able to give them, but I don't have time to make it right now. Right. So right. This, is, this is totally a God thing. <laughs> right? Yeah. So... So in James, it says the fervent, effectual prayer of a righteous man avails much. This is how you become righteous. You already are. That's right. It's by accepting what God says about you as true. And everything else is a lie or just has not submitted to the truth yet. Yet. Yeah, right? Yeah. So it doesn't matter if you make a mistake. You do something wrong today. It just hasn't submitted yet. But instead of beating yourself up for it, tell it to submit. 
No, you are the righteousness of God. My members shall glorify God and Him alone. All right, so... Well, when you think about it, don't you have authority over your own body that yes. God made in Psalm 139? How are you made? Fearfully and wonderfully. Yes. And you so just, we're going to talk about that next. Right. You just said something that is so profound and so powerful at the exact same moment is so simple. Speak it. Yeah. yeah. And know the that creative. God gave you the, the authority as the righteousness of Christ to... But we've been trained, and this is what I love about you breaking things down, we have been trained, well, you know, now that something bad happens, first it's probably your sins, probably this, it's probably that, and then, and we get off all the, well, you know, if I was really a good man, then I would, and all, and the enemy's like, yeah, yeah, here, let me, let me, let me throw some more on top of that, baby, <laughs> and you're just sitting there wallowing away in your, you know, pity, and, oh, I'm not good, I right? old worm Jacob, you know, the scripture says, old worm Jacob, but, you know, there's a point in that. And the simplicity of it is, I just screwed up. In Jesus' name, I take authority over that screw up, and I'm moving past it, and I'm saying no to what... It's really that simple, but we expect... An, and this is the point, you said with your wife, in a couple months. Mm -hmm. We pray over our wives, and there's a need there. Don't expect that in 24 hours she's suddenly going to go, oh, You're the greatest husband ever. She probably still won't do she that. She probably still won't, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What? But there's, but there's that, the authority is moving. It's happening. It's transitioning. Yeah. We need to keep speaking it. Right. Okay, so let me just, t let me tail off on something, what, what both of you guys just said. Um, what you're explaining, it seems like, is identity. So let's say you screw up, right? So the... This guy named Jonathan Welton writes, writes this book on how to help men overcome pornography. Because mm -hmm. pornography in the ministry, mm -hmm. I mean... Mm -hmm. It's devastating. Devastating. It's everywhere. So Jonathan Welton takes the approach, kind of what you're doing, Craig, and, it, and this is how you started. What is your identity? In other words, how do you see yourself in the terms of how God describes or sees you. In other words, do you align you aligned with that? And so I thought, well that's unique. Maybe I'll try that. You know? And hmm. and so I'm I you know, I go surfing and well I haven't been in a while, but but I was a consistent surfer for a long time. Well it's hard in the summertime. <laughs> you know, and you're trying to put your surfboard back on your car and you're up in the parking lot and you're getting this parade of thongs by you, you know. <laughs> And, and so, but I had read Jonathan Welton's book on identity. Who's your identity? So I tried it. Here I am strapping up the surfboard and I'm getting this parade here. And the enemy's trying to, wow, check that one out. And I said, and I actually did what he recommended. I said, that's not who I am anymore. Mm -hmm. Amen. Man, talk okay. about taking the knees out from the accuser. It just, it just, it just took the knees out from under him. And it was just like this fade away. It's just like this, you know, when you see, who was it, the, the Wicked Witch of the West at the end when she just kind of melts. Yeah, yeah and it was just kind of, this, kind of, it just kind of, a, take it gone. Yeah, and then, the, 